Hi everyone, finally here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Destroyer album, Labyrinthitis. This is the latest full-length LP from singer-songwriter Dan Behar's Destroyer, an artist whose musical project here I pop in on from time to time, not only because through Destroyer has he made uh, some of my favorite records within the indie sphere, but also because I think he's a one-of-a-kind lyricist and vocalist. There's just a really odd eccentric swagger to nearly everything he does that just hits deep for me, especially when he can land a line or a song that's super poignant or witty. The man is now just finishing up the third act of his career, if you consider his humble beginnings in the 90s, the strong creative and critical run he had in the 2000s, and then a milder series of records to follow in the 2010s that were a bit hit or miss. As I did love the theatrical chamber pop of Poison Season, and Kaput is a modern classic in every sense of the term, but the records Have We Met, as well as Ken, kind of were lacking in fiery songwriting, as well as a new idea or direction to implement, go after. Labyrinthitis does bring a change of pace to the table, though. One that I think is clearly spelled out in the album's title, as it's pretty easy to get lost in some of these songs. Maybe the overall experience of this LP is not as uh, confusing or anxiety-inducing as being caught in a maze, but on this LP, Dan Behar is consciously using repetition and grooves to get his point across, and create a series of gently danceable songs that you could vibe to, but also ruminate over a little bit on the lyrical side. Now, Dan is no stranger to groove. 2011's Kaput had a fair share of them. There are even moments on this LP some fans may be eager to compare to back then. But honestly, I don't know if I would say Dan has made a whole record thus far where dancing or maybe the idea of a dance floor is really at the core of nearly everything he's doing creatively, nor do I think he's made something in the past that is so overtly linear. And it kind of shows in good ways and bad. It does lead Dan to some very chaotic and unorthodox progression and instrumental choices that, yes, may come across a little nutty, but still do feel uniquely him. And yeah, this brings character to the record, whether it be on the song Suffer or with the sinister horns, tense bass lines, and spoken word of Tintoretto, It's For You. Plus on Eat the Wine, Drink the Bread, I can't think of a more Dan Behar moment than him saying, I piss on the floorboards. <laughs> The world's a stage, which of course happens against all of these very raw guitar and bass licks flying in every direction, and some driving beats and glamorous pianos as well. So yeah, there are some neat highlights as a result of this change of pace, but uh, simultaneously there are some spots that come across a little awkward or sloppy, especially in some of these extended jam moments, like on the song June, where things grow pretty tedious pretty fast, or with the woodblock, cowbell, and string hits that come through on It Takes a Thief that don't even sound mixed into the track. Then there are other cuts here where Dan seems content to just kind of blissfully ride out these beats and instrumentals into oblivion, bringing a more muted vocal performance or just not really that strong of a song and just allowing the beats to do the talking. Like on All My Pretty Dresses or It's In Your Heart Now. Even the title track of this LP is an ethereal contemplative instrumental cut. And of course, these are perfectly fine listenable songs, but there's not a whole lot to them lyrically or instrumentally that draws me back to them for a replay. The best of the more cerebral cuts on this LP, though, is probably the states. The light guitar and key embellishments riding across this endless driving forward of the floor beat does make for a legitimately hypnotic listen, with the whole thing getting more and more heady as it chugs along. The ambient outro on the track is a nice touch as well, especially as it segues effectively into the closing track, which is a, a very stripped back electric guitar ballad. And yeah, this final song is a very very blunt campfire-esque tune that leaves things on a kind of downtrodden note with lyrics like, you wake up, you stand up, you move to LA, you're just another person that moves to LA, an explosion is worse, a hundred million words, and that is maybe too many words to say. Possibly why Dan chose his words so carefully on this record. But either way, the brevity and somber tone of this cut uh, kind of just ends up making it feel like a, a sad little epilogue as opposed to a fully fleshed out song. Something to chill the fire of all the dance and disco beats prior, I guess. With this LP, I think Dan took a risk. I respect it. 
it does pan out into some decent highlights. But overall, I think the execution could use some work. And another thing I found odd about this album is that, that even though it is a normal length LP, it does feel kind of scant. It does feel like it's missing something, and maybe that has a lot to do with uh, some of the tracks here not really sticking with me all that long. So in a way, it does feel like I'm hearing less than I actually am. But yeah, this LP was really a mix for me of sloppy, forgettable, but then also very bold and enjoyable moments. Yeah, I'm not in love with it, but I wouldn't necessarily mind hearing Dan head in this direction again, especially if the end result features some more finely crafted instrumentals and songs. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Destroyer, uh, forever.